So we're back anchored on the beach. Um, active captain calls it Landrail Point. Uh, Navionics Pitts Town Marina or Pitts Town Anchorage. Uh, there's quite a few boats here, lots of other catamarans. And there was that big, huge uh, super yacht prime time. It was behind us for a few days. But it looks like we might have one more day or we might be off to Long Island tomorrow. So we'll see what happens. Davy's back on the treasure hunt. Hasn't found anything yet, but maybe he'll find me that diamond ring one day. No diamond rings today. None? No. A couple of beer cans and a bit of tin foil. But at least this beach isn't covered in trash. Some places this is just boring to do because you have to dig every five feet for another ring pool or another can or another beer top or something like that but uh no nice so take a stroll and see if we can find some pirate gold pirate gold hi we are erica and davy an adventurous slightly crazy couple who has taken on the challenge that is a hurricane damaged catamaran we have come so far and are beyond happy to be floating once more Subscribe to our channel to follow our journey. Take a chance. You never know how perfect something may turn out to be. Did you dig that hole all by yourself? What's in it? What's in the hole? <laughs> Is that you? That's a piece of tin foil. So there's always something that <laughs> needs to be done. Always. <laughs> so what are we dealing with today? So today I was actually going to um, work on the exhaust elbow on the um, port engine. That was my plan. Plans change. So this morning we've basically woken up to the Blue Eti, the lithium bank. It has been playing up a little bit lately, as in depleting its battery way too quickly. Um, when it says 60% charge, then suddenly 10 minutes later it's zero. So we knew there was an issue with it. Um, and this morning it just isn't taking a charge at all. So what I want to do, because we've got three solar panels that run directly to this, obviously I want those panels to be charging something if we can't use this. So next step is to reroute the power from the solar panels on the cabin top um, down to a independent Victron. Um, so that can go back into our network for the house bank. Seeing as we're gonna do that and we use the Bluetti, what do we use it for, Ben? We use it for cooking. <laughs> <laughs> we use it for our food, we use it for the Ninja. Um, yeah. The Ninja is the only way that we can actually cook on this boat because we don't have an oven or a stove that's functional. Um, so it's kind of important. So do all end all. So anyway, so while we're doing this, we don't have that. We do actually have a backup plan. Um, thank you very much to one of our patrons has sent us an inverter. I haven't pulled it out yet. It's in the box downstairs. So but it's a 3000 watt inverter, so it will be able to run the Ninja because the Ninja uses about 1400 watts. Yeah. Um, it has so a boost capacity as well as up to a surge like capacity, I think 6, they call it, 6,000. <laughs> so it should be no problem whatsoever to run the Ninja on it. So phase one, let's get the wire in so we can get those panels. So they're actually chucking those at that extra power, um, which is about 400 watts of power. So it's a decent chunk of power. Let's get that into the battery bank. Once we've done that, we're gonna wire in the new inverter. We have an inverter charger on board, but it's only 1200 watts. So it won't actually handle the uh, Ninja. So we're gonna, leave that charge controller but we're going to change the wiring we're going to leave that because that's our shore power connection to charge the batteries if we need to so i'm going to disconnect one side of it so that the new inverter will be the power out into all the sockets and all the usage power and the other cable coming out of the charge inverter will be the one which then charges the battery if we need to if we plug into shore power so i've turned into an electrician today i thought i was going to be a mechanic <laughs> there's always something so just to throw out here with the Blue Eti, um, we have been in communication with the company um, 
especially when this first started happening. So it would be at like 70%, then it would all of a sudden drop to zero. So they said, they gave us a few tips that when it's at zero, charge it um, with the AC power only all the way up to 100%. Um, this took a while and it would sit at 99%, so we thought it was like recalibrating the battery system inside. Um, we've done that probably three times now um, to try and recalibrate the system and it would always then kind of work a little bit, but then it would go back to its initial problem and it would be at 60% and die to zero. Last night it did this, we did manage to make dinner on it, we were charging the laptop while we were watching Black Sails. Um, and it, all was, it was at 40% and it dropped straight to zero. So this morning, normally when the, so, when the sun comes up, it kicks in and it starts charging it. But this morning, it just hasn't been doing it. It will say initializing, but then the screen goes blank. So it's not accepting any power. Um, anyways, the company has been really, really good. And they have, in fact, sent us another unit. However, being in the Bahamas, um, we haven't got our hands on it yet. It, it has been sent to one of our patrons in the States, and he is planning to get it out to us when that's gonna happen, we're not quite sure just yet. Um, but we do know that we will have another one coming to us. So the customer service on Blue Etty's end is fantastic. Um, so we still would recommend the product. But yeah, for now, we need to come up with some sort of solution so that we can still cook on this boat and uh, protect the solar panels that are up there. So let's crack on. So what do you do when something doesn't work? Some people take back to the store. Some people buy a new one. I take them apart. Um, electronics is not my definite forte. I mean, all the basic stuff, 12 volt stuff, normal DC, AC, house wiring, electrics, basic boat stuff, all that sort of stuff, yeah, for sure. But when you're getting into all these circuit boards with all this stuff in here, uh, they're well and truly over my head. Do you want to explain what it happened again? It broke. It stopped working. <laughs> it stopped working, so I thought I'd take it apart. Um, I think I need to find out if we're still covered by the warranty. <laughs> they did initially say send the old one back to us so they can find the problem but as we were in the DR at the Can't time Can't find it, I've looked <laughs> As we were in the DR at the time it wasn't feasible to send it back because even FedEx a small letter to mum and dad was like $70 um, so an 88 pound unit was going to be way too expensive to send back so Davey decided to take it apart and see if he can fix it no, I never thought I was going to be able to fix this, guys. That's for sure. I never thought I was going to be able to fix this. Um, I wanted to know what it was like, and I'm very interested to see what these battery cells are like. Um, as we know, lithium batteries are quite expensive, and this is a 48 volt um, bank in here. 200, yeah, 2000 two, watt. Two, that, yeah, it's about 200 amp hour, 48 volt battery bank in there. So these are individual cells inside. I'm going to dig deeper and I'm going to pull a few bits and pieces out that maybe I could play with, maybe I could make something with it later. Could add them, I could use these for something Can weird I talk to and my, wonderful. Talk to Clark. Yeah, we could have a speak with Clark over on Temptress. He's going to be, oh, I want that part and that part. You can come and collect it, mate. You can have most of it. Um, in fact, if you come now, you can have it all. What's cruising, babe? <laughs> Fishing boats in exotic locations. I think that's how it goes, isn't it? I've run a bit of wire, guys. <laughs> All right, so I've run some power from the top here, the solar panels and the cabin top. Eric thinks this needs to be on video. Anyway, a piece of cable going around the hard top there, down the back, through there, in the lazarette, gonna go through to the engine room where this will connect to the Victor. Woohoo! <laughs> How's that receding hairline? Your hair is getting longer. How's your whole head? <laughs> I can slap it now, it's not, it's not sunburn. You need a haircut. Yeah, I know, you're supposed to do it yesterday. <laughs> Does Davey have to get in the box again? No. Are you sure? Yeah. <laughs> it's just everything's in the way. That's huge! Look at it! Where's it gonna go? Um, well, there is a wall inside. There's like an electrical wall inside the uh, engine room there that's got the other inverted charger on it. It's got all the blue, all the Victron. Um, charge controllers on it, so this has got to fit on there as well, but I might have to rearrange some stuff. So this here is the wall Davey was talking about. So we have the two Victrons so far. We're going to have the third Victron will go on there, and that's the Master Volt um, inverter charger. So that one we will leave wired in for charging the boat through shore power. There might be enough space down here 
to put that one, maybe, hopefully, <laughs> so we don't have to adjust anything too much. Oh, Davey just said there isn't enough space. <laughs> so no, we will at have the to moment move there isn't, I'm going to have to move some stuff. So. Go and check out the wiring on here before I make a uh, decision on what to move and how to move. Um, so obviously cool. I need to be able to get to all the connections and everything. So tomorrow might be a good day to go into the little town, the little settlement. Because um, just behind me there is the mail truck. So that means fresh veggies, bread, all sorts. So I think it comes in once a week or once every couple weeks. Because um, it's one of the out islands of the Bahamas. So might be able to get some fresh bread. Woo! <laughs> Davy's down in the hole trying to uh, finish off this process. Disconnects and everything so I can connect it all back up. What are you disconnecting? Um, the inverter charger's got to be disconnected so I can remount it in a different position. And then I've just got to... I can, I can get this in. The inverter is on. Did you turn it off? I've turned it off already. Yeah, yeah and I've just got to reposition everything, make sure the wiring is all good and safe. So, yeah. Hello, be good. Just uh, wasn't planned on this today. Hey, can't beat the workshop really, can you? <laughs> Look at that! to Davy's office. <laughs> All right, I think I'm nearly done here, guys. So I want to show you what I've done. Um, I haven't been running the camera while I've been down here, purely for the fact that there isn't really much room, but I'm going to take you and show you a little bit now. So if we plug in shore power into here, to the master, this will then connect to the master vault, which purely will charge up the battery bank, which is up here. Um, whenever we want now power for the sockets inside, we now have a separate button which will turn on the bigger inverter, which is connected up here to the big chunky cables which go to the battery bank. Also, we had before the 100 by 50 and another 100 by 50 for the panels that are on the hard top. Um, we've now added another one. I had a backup. I had a spare, just a small one, which is a 75 by 15. That there can handle the three panels that are on the coach roof, uh, the three flexi panels. So that's now plumbed in. So that all the panels are now running and uh, they all run actually as a network because they've all got Bluetooth. So everything's now pretty even, pretty neat and tidy. I'm quite happy with that. So I think what we'll do is we'll go inside and we'll test to make sure everything works. But one last thing before we do go inside and test that everything works. This is the distribution panel that came with the boat. This is here, inverter power outlet. So all the power that we get inside. So I, the, for example, the hot water tank, that's in here, that only works on shore power. Whereas this here is the outlets in the boat. So in the bathrooms, in the living room, in the kitchen, etc., and they all run off of 15 amp fuses. So don't worry guys, we can't cook the system or set fire to the boat. Um, if we're drawing too much power through the inverter, it will simply trip one of these switches here and uh, close off that circuit. So we've got a little bit of safety built in there. Okay, so down here on the port side, our storage side, um, we have this little button. So this is how we can turn on the inverter um, without having to go into the engine room. So you press and hold it and it comes on. So let's just see if everything works. The kettle just came on. They did. The kettle definitely just came on. So do you want to try boiling some water? It's working. So what's this kettle? This is a thousand watt kettle, isn't it's it? It's a thousand watt kettle, yes. So seems to be working. Everything's all blue. So while Davy's been down there doing some other bits and pieces, I've reorganized. I took blue tea off of its shelf because um, we don't need it there anymore. So I'm trying to organize our stuff a little bit better um, so it's a little bit easier to access. Um, the next one we're going to test is the Ninja. Da -da -da -da. So we've talked about it before, the Ninja, she draws 1400 watts, so it's quite a lot of power, um, but this is how we cook our food, so let's see. Let's just try air crisp. So far so good, <laughs> it's working, um, let's see. She draws quite a lot of amps. Um, let's see if solar will kick in eventually. Um, we might have to do a lot of our cooking during daytime now. What do you think? Uh, we can cook at night time, that's absolutely fine, but we're not gonna replenish what we use from the battery bank. As before, we had the Blue Eddy, which I think was about 200 amp hour battery, and we could run the Ninja on that for about 45 minutes. 
So if you think about it, the house bank is what, 600, but we only use about 300 of it. So we don't want to do too much cooking at night time. We want to do cooking when we've got the sun to replenish it. Uh, so that's definitely going to be a little bit of a drawback for us. But we do, as you know, have the new Blue Etty on the way. So we'll be able to continue to use that as our cooking method, if you will. So as we showed you yesterday, um, we got that new inverter installed, which is fantastic. Everything seems to be running well so far. Um, but now Davey's going to crack on with what he actually intended to do yesterday, which is... going to change out the exhaust elbow on this side. Um, I think it's probably got the same problem as the other side with a bit of corrosion on the back side. So this is an exhaust elbow. This isn't a brand new one, but it's not in too bad a condition. So I'm going to clean this one up with a wire brush. Looks like there may be slight leakage or seeping on the weld there. So I'm going to JB weld that one up. Um, this is one I'm going to put on. So I take the other one off. I actually had a dream the other morning and I woke up thinking I need to change that exhaust elbow. So if I dreamt it, I probably should do it because otherwise it's going to fail when we're halfway in a crossing or something in the middle of the ocean in the middle of the night. So, yeah, going to swap it out. We'll have a look what that one looks like. The JB Weld Repair on the other one did very, very well and it still is going very, very well. So I'm going to see if there's any corrosion back there. If there isn't, great, we'll just clean it up. New gasket and uh, pop the new one on. If there is corrosion, I'll rebuild it. Uh, pack it all together, put it back on with this uh, little guy here because it looks to be in a bit better condition. I think we're going to have to order a couple of new ones of these, um, but these will do for now for getting us through the Bahamas. Alrighty guys, good news on this one. This one's in much, much better condition than the other one, but I'm going to show you here. So I've got, I've got the exhaust elbow off. This is the mounting plate. The last one was broken all the way through here. You can see here there's a little bit of corrosion at the bottom. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the other gasket on. I'm going to put that little bit of JB weld just in this little area here at the bottom so no water can sit there. I'm going to grease up these nuts here and pop on the replacement that I've got here. Um, it's going to make me sleep easier at night or should I say probably just do passages without thinking about that exhaust elbow. But anyway, good to check it and also good to get the rust off those nuts they were starting to corrode. So we got back from the beach, now we're going to have our first barbecue on the boat. Um, we haven't used the barbecue as much because it is a charcoal grill so it takes a bit to get going. Um, but why not? So we're going to have burgers. <laughs> burgers. 